What's poppin' T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, and today I have a special guest with me, my bestie, Sharita. Say what's up to the T-Squad, Sharita. Hey, lenders of the world. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we are here to discuss last night's uh, Real Housewives of Potomac reunion part four. This is the part that everybody was waiting on when Nikki came out. And I must say, I think that she delivered. I do feel like she could have went harder uh, with some of the questions, especially to some of the castmates. Now, I know at the end of the mm -hmm. episode, we heard Karen say uh, that she went hard on Giselle. Well, we didn't really see that um, from what they edited. And they get on my nerves. I feel like Bravo's editors be protecting certain people. but They definitely protect Giselle. For sure. And I feel like they remember they said family. she had a meltdown last year at the um, reunion with something between her and Chris Samuels and they edited that out. That's yeah. something that should have definitely made the final cut. So, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, who did she start with? She started with Ashley. She started about, with Ashley. Yeah. And I felt like, I don't know, like, I felt like just from me watching it, she and, and it's just, Ashley, anybody yes, else. like I felt like she, like she, you could tell Ashley is not her favorite. Mm -mm, <laughs> like, mm -mm. and I just don't, I don't know if it's because maybe she's a new mom and she's looking at it from a, a mother's per, point of view or perspective or something. I don't know, but I felt like the way she, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad I wanted her to give it to everybody equally, which was fine, but I just, I, I felt like it was unwarranted in a way. Like, well, you, this was a lot. If anything, yeah. and the reason why she was coming in, Ashley, I felt like that could have been directed towards Giselle and Robin, but it was kind of like she took it out on Ashley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I, I so. agree. I agree that this season... Well, I don't agree this season that Ash Ashley didn't necessarily have a storyline because she was talking about... You not having, you know, and then being a new mom and this, that, and third or whatever. Yeah. She had more of a storyline than Giselle. <laughs> Let's, Giselle and Robin, the fuck? No storyline. At all. Like, Giselle's storyline was her fucking, was her getting cussed out by Wendy all the time. <laughs> that was her story. <laughs> 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 and Karen eating her ass up in the beginning of the season. And her and Robin scissoring in their hotel when they left their house. Yeah, because so they was lying their asses off talking about the they got sisters. <laughs> the scissor sisters were sleeping together. Y'all were eating each other's vagina. Remember, remember when she said to Karen, she said, you're mad because Ray wants to lick Erica up and down. You want to lick Robin up and down. Okay, how about that? Mm -hmm. So, because like I said, they she had that room dark in the motherfucker. She had that phone up to her face like this, yeah, and was whispering, and her, "Girl, get out of here." But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree that she went real hard on Ashley. I didn't appreciate the fact that Ashley was doing Giselle's dirty work for her because you know how Giselle is and you know how she works. So why did you even participate right. in this shit about Wendy's husband and? allow Giselle to talk you in to talking to her and telling her yourself you know how Giselle do at this point like so I felt like right. that was stupid on Ashley's part or whatever um right I agree when let's skip to the part though when she was asking the girls that were they that are married to older men would they be with their husbands if they had a hundred million dollars themselves and Ashley was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> No, no. Ashley said no. She no, said, no. What do you she like no. about him? Yeah, she when she asked that girl, what do you find attractive about? What do you him? find attractive about? <laughs> she don't like Ashley. Because <laughs> that shit was rude as hell, but it was the I shit was that we wanted to know. Then when she asked Robin, 
does he hang with other gay men? She said, Michael's not gay. She was like, oh. (laughs) That whole segment about Juan being friends with Michael was some real I'm so glad she went there because it don't make things that make you go like like, this is shit that niggas been wanting to know forever. Like I talk about this with my girlfriends and they be like, I don't know if Juan is good. Bitch, Juan is talking about going to fucking Vegas with Michael alone and Michael said that he would suck his dick. Why is he comfortable with that? Any other straight man that I know, especially black men, like she said, they would not be okay with that. They would not be comfortable with that. Why is he entertaining it? Exactly. Uh, like it make it make sense. If he doesn't have to be mean to him or anything like that. No, 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 no. They can still have. No, I'm just have clarifying it. Like, yeah, but but all the hugging them and shit like that. The, no, that no, no. <laughs> yeah, people think I be playing so, when I say Juan and Michael. Do, <laughs> I see between the lines, child. So I, the it show is so probably the top there. of all of them, and behind closed doors, he probably with Michael, and she's probably with Giselle. <laughs> Everybody's hustling. Everybody, <laughs> name that show in the comedy show if y'all know that's. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. We are gonna stick together to pay these bills, but you do you and I do me, and that's yep. when we be in the middle because the shit just don't Hello. add. Michael be like, well, Michael was like, I told you you wouldn't marry her. Like, he be too matter of fact about the shit. Like, <laughs> no, but his eyes literally light. When Juan, Juan come in the room, he perks the fuck up like a peacock. It's like, my dick is here. Yes, she ma'am. Said, Robin, do you think Michael was attracted to Juan? And she, she was, was like, like, yeah, she's sexually. I mean, what other way is there? <laughs> like, that shit is crazy to me. Like, crazy. It yeah, is. Fuck it. It really and like is. I said, that's how they got the damn paper for their house. It didn't come from no fucking hats. It came from him. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. No. Nah. Uh-uh. Ain't nobody buying them 99 cent hats. Girl, get out of here. Your nigga is gay for pay. And you over there just gay, period. Girl. Yeah, he bisexual. You buy him something, he gets sexual. Girl, exactly. Um, But yeah, I do feel like she went extra hard on Ashley and really was nice pretty much to everybody else in a sense yeah it was like it was it was like funny shade but with ashley yeah. it wasn't funny shade <laughs> no like she was taking actual deeds yeah uh, i'm really she, disappointed with her well i guess we can go in order but go ahead yeah i was gonna say this she yeah. went to robin well we pretty much already discussed robin robin sitting up there talking about some her and uh Juan was having more sex because they had to get creative because the kids. Girl, you and Juan ain't bit more fucking. Girl, Girl you a carpet muncher. You was not <laughs> doing nothing with no Juan and no pandemic. You look like you ain't even wash your ass during the day. Like <laughs> The only reason I can see Juan being attracted to Robin at this point is because she's shaped like a nigga and because she acts like a nigga. <laughs> she dressed like a nigga. She ain't got no. <laughs> he always talk about farting and shitting and stuff. Period. Like she's just disgusting. Like she's a man. Like, I ain't never done. A broke man. <laughs> yeah, like she, and like I don't understand. Like how he can find anything about her femininely attractive because she don't give you nothing feminine about her. Only time Girl. we see Robin being feminine is when she has to dress up. Other than that, Robin roll and out. Even still, it looked rough. She looked rough. Yeah, she just be like. She, Girl, she looked like Miss Trenchpool. Yes, like literally, Robin don't comb her. Her like Robin don't give a fuck that she don't. No, comb that they, and you know what's crazy? They asked them that on horror. You got to watch horrible, the horrible decisions. Um, okay, thing because they talked about they they t- they talked to them about that. Her and Giselle um spoke about that on there. But yeah, she the the best Robin look it was in her that confessional. Yeah, when she had the bun yeah. and the two pe- the two piece the two bang pieces like. That was the best she has looked. And like she could have worn the that to the reunion. Six seasons. The whole six seasons. Like that was the best she has looked the entire time. That she honestly could have worn it to the. She should have saved that hairstyle 
Yeah, put a reunion, everything, everything, because everything. that was the best she has ever looked. Other than that, Robert don't even be having her hair curled. She be putting on them dusty ass, dingy dusty ass, ass, cheap um, ass, embellished hats on top of her ball headed ass short cut, girl, and be right. so ready to. And I and I feel like she just don't be getting dressed up because she know she got to defend Giselle. She never know when shit gonna pop off, girl. So, exactly, because she is that lady bodyguard. You can't tell me, girl. I'm surprised she ain't say nothing to um the Wendy when Wendy tweeted her last night. Oh, Wendy tweeted uh who? No, when Wendy tweeted Giselle, I'm surprised Robin oh, didn't say nothing yeah, to her. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she would get up and say something today. Uh-huh. Um, then who did she go to next? She went to Giselle next and was talking about yeah. what did she talked to her about. And that's how you know Giselle don't be in the fucking hot seat because Giselle because she was like Giselle was like, can we go to the next person? She said no. <laughs> Uh, yeah. She was talking to her about Jamal. You know, I started watching it a little late, though. So when yeah. I started watching it, she was on Giselle. But I know she spoke to her. She talked to her about Jamal a lot. Um, and oh, about their church and stuff. And then she was with him yeah. from the beginning. Then she went to the question about uh, her and Robin fucking. And yes. they basically proved our point that they are fucking because <laughs> <laughs> sis they are like, lesbians from the 90s. Girl, they couldn't even get the lie together. She was being Giselle was uh basically on some shit. Like you better not answer that question. Who you a fuck? Like it was just really weird. And then here goes, <laughs> here goes yeah, you know how matter of fact, you know how you know how Wendy was when they asked if your husband would uh fuck anybody in, in your friendship in your friend group. Who would it be? And Wendy was looking at that nigga like you better not. That's how Giselle was looking at her. Like you better not. Uh huh, and that's how you knew it was some bullshit because Robin gave that old typical ass. It would be you, Nikki girl. Get out yes, of here. she was like that was a safe answer. Get out of here, girl. Y'all uh-huh. are fucking. Y'all are lovers. Just be together and be done with it. That's why Giselle can't keep no nigga because you are a nigga and you put a stop to it every time. <laughs> like girl, <laughs> she run away all her men. Girl, get away. Get out of here. Just be a father girl. to them girls. Be a father to them girls because you ain't being a father to them uh, little boys. Be Not a, a father. father. <laughs> Not a father. <laughs> she do. She need to go ahead and be a father to Delilah Daffodil. I and- swear to God, you will get beat the fuck up. <laughs> Them kids need a father. They don't like Jamal. She called that girl. I'm t- I be telling Keisha all the time, yo, she's going to get her ass whooped. And I hope I ain't here because, bitch, I can't fight no more, okay? I'm too fat and tired. So she on her own. I, she be calling that girl sons the Menendez twins. Robin Stocky ass is going to beat Keisha fucker. She going to say she a father to Giselle kids. Oh, he do need to be a father to the girls. Them girls need a daddy. Girl. <laughs> And don't uh, they real daddy don't want to be a daddy? They can't stand his ass. Shit, you peep game that they only Girl, like Robin. And they keep talking about Jamal, and I just be thinking to myself like, Jamal ain't here. When Jamal was here, Jamal wasn't here. So, no, exactly. He was in the phone. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> Harry so fucking rude. She's so fucking shady, y'all. <laughs> Uh, then she went to Mia talking about whether. Oh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. One thing, one thing before we move on. Uh, I was happy that she dug deep with Giselle in the Jamal situation because I hate the fact that Giselle is always trying to get everybody else to be so open with their relationships, and she only tell what the fuck she want to tell when it comes to her own shit. I hate yeah. that about her. Yeah, but so, if, if you paid attention, she really didn't tell us nothing that we didn't already know if you follow yeah, that's as true. a pastor. She still ain't really give up no tea, for real, for real. Um, Like I said, she went to Mia next <coughs> and talked about Mia and her mama and that whole situation and then she went into asking Mia what's the difference between a strip being a stripper and an entertainer And about her oh. and G having threesomes, like it really was so uncomfortable. Uh, 
<laughs> That's how you would have asked. I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, she at least she honest about the fact that you know they get down, they get it popping or whatever. I mean, she, yeah, that, and that's cool. She is very forthcoming. Like Ashley is forthcoming about. Stuff yeah, the fact hurt. that they over there, you they know. just need to all have a threesome together. Everybody, I mean, just course. a big ass orgy. Mike loaded the poor G. hub and get these yep. millions. Michael G, <laughs> Ashley, and Mia. That shit'll be wild as fuck. That shit'll break the motherfucking internet. All I, I can just picture is G with his tongue out and his <laughs> eyes rolling in the back of his head. Yeah, ew, ew. <laughs> 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 You know both of them hoes. When he stuck other that tongue out, Karen, Karen <laughs> almost <laughs> ran. <laughs> Karen ain't seen no tongue action like this since the 80s. Karen was Girl. like, ooh. <laughs> it gave her flashback, child. Uh-uh. Yes. And I just, next season, I want me to like, yeah. That flip-floppy shit irritates me. I want her to just stay, up, get, put her feet on one street. And walk, just walk. Focus. Don't take no detours. One way, not a two way street. Don't make a right. Don't pass. Go and collect one hundred co- and collect two hundred dollars. Keep your ass on the straight and narrow and just walk, bitch. Like she yeah, drives me crazy. Yeah. Me and one of them people. If you paid attention this season, she give good reads on accident. Like yeah. when she say little shit, it'd be like, oh, she went there, but then she. She don't have the following. Well, she ain't trying to be. Yeah, she, she yeah, wants to be well, that's funny when she's not be, trying to be. She messes up. And right. then, like you said, with the whole flip-floppy thing, like, she say one thing, and then she say something else later, and then she right. half-ass tells the girl's right. story correctly. Like, I do think that a lot of the stuff she did was, you know, to kind of solidify her spot on the show next season. Yeah. So, ne- next year, I, I, next season, I do want to see her, you know, Standing in her, you know, standing yeah. in her in her lane, you know, not not yeah. flip flopping too much. And I would also, I want to, I, I own your shit, bitch. If your nigga helps you get to the successful place to the to a successful point in your life, that's fine. Yeah. Have these bitches up here, their husbands did the same thing. And if Giselle as could find a fucking man, he would be helping her too. So, and Robin is broke and she can't help Giselle. So that's why Giselle was mad because she's with a broke lesbian. So yeah. there's nothing she can do about that. So, but my thing is your fucking man is helping you. And then you got this show as a platform. Cause I do think Mia has some sense. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I, I do think she, she, she has some type of business acumen and that's fine. If he helps you in certain ways, but like, that's like who, who get, who get, uh, who's trying to come down on people whose parents, Look out for them. Like at the end of like Kyrie says, your only son. Like you damn right, I'm gonna look out for him. Like you feel what I'm saying? Right. Like I'm my mom only child. Like and I'm my dad only girl. Like he's gonna parents are gonna fucking do for their kids. So there's right. nothing wrong with somebody helping you get to where you need to be. Everybody needs help. So yeah, I like Mia overall. It's like once she get that together, I feel like she could be a fan favorite. So I really yeah. want her to come back next season, fresh and new, prepared. Like you said, stop straddling the fence and doing this, that, and the third. Like, just be right. firm. We know going into only- next season, she don't get along with Candace. Right. And I, I was about to say, the only thing I would want her to do is beat Candace ass. That's the only... It, it, I wouldn't even have no bad feedback for, Can- if, for, for, for me if she would have beat the shit out of Candace when she threw that piece of lettuce at her. I wanted her to drag that bitch up she and down that fucking ass. house. Like, I wanted her to beat shit down Candace League. If she come back next season and beat up Candace, boom. I they need to bring my girl Monique back, but that's another story. Yeah. We, and you know, in the comment section on my page and everybody else's and all the t- Twitter and Instagram forms, it's the argument about uh, being physical with a person just because of the things that they say out their mouth. And what people don't right. understand is you just can't say any and everything to Absolutely. body. Absolutely. And then, like I said, I think that it also plays into Candace's home because she has a very strong voice and a little body. And I can see if she could back it up, but we right. all know she can't. So it's just like, 
bitch, I will kill you. <laughs> like, yeah, no, for real. Ooh, and Jesus. people also don't understand that everybody comes from different places and everybody has different backgrounds and different beliefs. I was one of those girls who grew up in the hood. So I grew up fighting was very, it's very normal in Philly. We, uh, it's rare for somebody to grow up without having a couple of fights. Right. So like, I think my last fight was when I, I'm 32. I think my last fight, I was probably like 28, like some ghetto shit, like, but it happens. So, but the way I grew up, you cannot go around bullying people, antagonizing people, provoking people and disrespecting people and thinking that and, and having the mentality of, oh, you need to figure out something to say back to me because putting your hands on me isn't acceptable. No. No, 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 no. Because some people can't fight with words. Some people can't fight with words. And then also, you don't know what people are going through. You don't know what triggers people. You don't know anything like that. So my thing with Candace is you can't walk around doing all of these, doing all of these things and saying all of these things and being disrespectful to people and 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 having the mentality of, oh, I'm just better at orating, uh, orating than other people are and they can't handle it. They probably can't, but you also can't handle getting punched in the motherfucking face. So what that and, and what that means is that you need to tread lightly on the shit that you say out your motherfucking mouth. Because bitch, people are people don't care about, oh, we too old to be fighting. People don't care about, oh, I'm I'm gonna get uh she's gonna she's gonna sue me and all that other people don't care about shit like that. So yeah, yeah. if you don't want to get your face stopped in, you need to be careful and be mindful of what the fuck you say out of your mouth because everybody had different upbringings to you. And you could tell, I always say Candace, Candace has, she's a Karen. She's a real life Karen. She exhibits <laughs> Karen and white women, beha- white woman behavior. And it is very fucking dangerous because you see now she want to play the colorism card with Wendy. That shit gets on my nerves. This no, ain't that. that. Was with, not with Wendy. That was with Ashley. Well, no, I'm saying her and Wendy playing it together. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But she wants to play it. She wants to play the, the colorism card. And now, and talk, like, my thing is, Wendy be talking about, me and my girlfriend Ashley had, to, we had a conversation about this. Wendy wanted to talk about, oh, it's not right to call black women aggressive and da 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 and which is, and I, I agree with that to a certain but extent. You did However, season, you exhibit she said, but not only did she say that last season to Monique, but you also exhibit aggressive behavior and you've done it more than one time. You were aggressive towards Ashley when you first came on the show last season. You were aggressive <coughs> um, to Giselle this season saying, oh, you should be glad these cameras is here and I will fuck you up. And da, 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 da. So that's why I can't really fuck with Wendy like that because it's like she makes it hard for me to not to, to like her. I don't, it's like I, I, I kind of like her shading and reading Giselle and Robin because I don't like them, mm-hmm. but I also don't like you. So no. I can't, I can only give her too much. I, it's only so much that I can give her. But no, that motherfucking yeah. Candace, I just feel like Candace, it, there, it, what irritates me about Candace is the not only the fact that she provokes people and shit like that, she, you know, disrespects people and shit like that. It's, it's like, there is no consequences for her actions and no. y'all allow her y'all had footage of her doing this to people for two, three years straight and y'all ostracized Monique from the group and y'all saw her th- pick up some shit, throw it at Mia first of all, she came to that house ready for, ready to start with Mia she was saying shit to Mia all day soon as she walked through the soon motherfucking as she door walked in the fucking door and that is why I was not satisfied with uh, Nikki's questions to Candace. I don't give a fuck about her music career. She could do that shit on her own time. Talking about she sold 20,000 right? I don't give a fuck if she sold 20 million. I don't want to hear that shit. We talking about what the fuck is going on on this show. So mm-hmm. I felt like her questions uh, towards Candace could have been way better than what the fuck they yeah, were. I'm like, did they edit the shit out? Like, what the fuck is going right. on here? Like, the right. fuck? But my thing also with Candace is she want to say that people can't handle her mouth, but she can't handle other people's mouths. Uh, oh, no. Because uh-uh. if- she could, she wouldn't resort to throwing shit at people when she get fucking right. mad. So, right. and let's not forget, sense. she and say some shit and then grab them square tissues and start crying. Girl, if you don't get the fuck Girl. out of here, make it make sense. I'm telling you, Andy, please put me on. Put me on the next season. 
Oh, I already know by episode three, I'm whooping Candace ass. I already know. I only need the. I only need a good three episodes. I don't, <laughs> I'm, I'm already going into the season knowing that I'm not getting another contract for the next one. So yeah. I already know. But by episode three, she's going to get dropped. Like you cannot do that to people, and you can tell all of her life. She's done this all of her her entire life. She's literally going to school, and she's had altercations with people. Uh, verbally, not physically. She's had verbal altercations with people, and there was nothing done about it. She didn't. She's she's never gotten her ass whooped, so she doesn't see that. You know how everybody say, mm. you know, you, you kind of need your ass whooped in order to. Yeah. She's never had that. She's mm. never had that. And it was such a shocker when Monique did this shit. Bitch, you got your ass whooped in on national television. She was so embarrassed that she want to fucking put up Mary Jane post its and play victim and shit like that, but. You could put your hand in that girl's face and say, oh, you going to drag me, drag me, and da, 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 and you got dragged and you were sick. So, I, uh, the, in, the, in, the, in the Candace committee, y'all can, can say what the fuck y'all want in the comments, because I will eat y'all asses up too, but she gets yeah. on my nerves. Like, I cannot with that girl. Yeah. I don't think it's nobody. I thought I hated Kenya, and I don't even watch Atlanta no more. I stopped watching Atlanta years ago. I thought I hated Kenya ass, but, but that damn Candace, oh, baby. Yeah. Ooh. The devil spawn, the devil spawn, honey. Yeah. So yeah, we done talked about her ignorant ass. Um, Who Karen else? didn't really give too much to Karen. Oh wait, but before we get off Candace, the singing part, the fact that she didn't even want to uh, sing her own song and they girl. had to fucking sing. <laughs> and then when she lied, she sold five hundred uh, thousand uh, copies, and Nikki was like, "She said no, no. You didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't." No, you didn't. So then she had to look the shit up. It was 20,000. She was like, how long has it been out? She was like, two months. And Nikki was like, because <laughs> yeah, that's not good. That's it's not, not good. good at it's all not good. in the record industry that you only sold 20,000 copies. 20,000 copies. Yeah. No. And then when Mia said, wait, when Mia said, how you know I don't have $100,000 in the bank now? She said, because I know you don't. <laughs> you don't. You don't, sis. <laughs> You don't. <laughs> you don't. You don't. And don't. Well, baby, when she finally sang or whatever, she did a cute little yang yang or whatever. It, did. it was a little, you know, the strongest of voices, but she got a voice. Um, I'm not gonna hate on that. Uh, the little drive back song, it's cute for what it is. It's not my flavor of song, but it's cute for what it is. Now, what cracked me up was when they took the break and Chris came out there times I don't like her line of questions. I so, if you don't Man, who, sit your punk pussy shut, ass down somewhere, you old Neapolitan looking ass nigga, boy, get out of here. Shelby Burger, if you don't get the fuck out of here, who the fuck are you to even, you You should be glad she's getting any type of exposure or questioning regarding her fucking uh, music. Whether that the fucking numbers are not her. good. You mad because you know the numbers ain't good. That's what the fuck you mad about. Exactly. Exactly. And I don't know if y'all know today, uh, Nikki was uh tweeted about that, and she was like, "Uh, Candy Girl husband needs to get somewhere and sit down, child, or whatever." He responded, he was like, "I ain't got to do nothing but support my wife." Like you, that man, you here to argue with a woman on Twitter? Child. Ain't you got errands to run, sir? Ain't you got don't phone you, calls to answer? Don't you got lettuce to chop? And don't you <laughs> got kids to neglect? <laughs> like yeah. you got your first born. <laughs> okay. Where that first child at? Don't Where's you got butter knives to pick up and a wife to fucking back out of fights that she ain't gonna win? Girl, get out of here. Oh, and then then they get on the damn uh, reunion. How y'all know? Y'all act like I came from nothing. Y'all act like I ain't got shit. Uh, when y'all started uh, the show, y'all even said that you met her while she was a waitress at the restaurant that you worked at and you was a cook. Nigga, I used to date a nigga that uh, was a cook. You didn't have nothing. <laughs> what are you talking about, <laughs> sir? Get the fuck out of here. Beating who enough about them whack ass people. Then she went to Karen. She didn't really say too much to Karen about really nothing. Yeah, for them. she just talked to Karen. She asked her about did she already know about the tall salad? Oh yeah, that's stupid shit. Uh, that was disgusting. I wanted to throw the fuck up. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't need that visual in my head. I can't. I, me. Tossing Ray salad. And I can, I'm visualizing it right now and I can just see Ray going. <laughs> 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 that is nasty as hell. 
<laughs> and then she went to Wendy and uh okay, so what did you think about Wendy looking at her notes? I, I didn't like, like it. Was, I, I did I about to say I felt like that was whack. Like, why would you look at that girl notes and you like, know you, you, you that scared that, like what she gonna ask you? That's what girl, she was scared of shit. She was petrified because she knew yes. she was gonna bring up that shit. Wendy don't yeah. want nobody to bring up nothing that is going to embarrass her regarding their marriage. And you had to go into this reunion already knowing that it was going to be brought up a few times. So yeah. here's that. And Giselle wasn't lying. She said she would never, nobody has ever and would never sneak and look at Andy's cards. No. So why never. would you do that to her? And then my never. thing is that was also stupid because bitch, you know that they are filming you right now and you're filming up. everything. Like, Make Let me tell you sense. one thing. She was a big failure at this reunion because she came with them whack ass receipts that didn't do nothing. Andy Girl. was looking at her like, "This what you asked me to bring this shit on her." And Girl. when he said, "This is a fall," this is this a is fall. a <laughs> this is a we went from a binder to loose like it, it did not give the binder effect. It did not get. It did not just. Listen, yeah, my bitch Monique had dividers in the binder. Dividers color ready. Divi- they were co- color coded. Perfect. They had cover pages. Laminated. Don't play with her. She had no. graphs and charts. Child, bitch, you came ready. with a fucking Manila folder with a Manila folder that goes into a filing cabinet. Wendy, if you don't get the fuck on, girl, by it was not the same effect. The bars in hell now. No. And the bars in hell. viewers all on social media last night was like, Wendy was a fail. She was a fail at this yep. damn reunion. She did not give what needed to be give, gave. Uh, she, you know, had her one-liners here. She ate Giselle up and robbing up in certain instances, but when it came Oh, to yeah, it, I ain't gonna lie, because I do love when she used their words against them. I be cracking the fuck yeah. up. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, but other than that, I agree. read Robin and Giselle. Like, I mean, look so at this. Easy. It's so easy. So easy. Girl, so it's easy to read the whole cast, bro. For I mean, real. really. Like, really. Especially really. can't like, and that's why I be saying, like, Candace is such an easy read. Giselle is such so an easy, easy read. Like, if she want to talk about using your words. Like, if we and you was on her, oh, Candace would be in a mental That, that girl, she would be in a fucking mental... Yeah, she would be in inpatient therapy, for sure. Girl, she for would sure. try to fight me every time she's... <laughs> she wouldn't try to fight nobody. She oh, wouldn't try to fight nobody. God, Jesus Christ. But she, um, one, she already know one fight, we all fight, so she's getting jumped. That's that's one. That's number one, and two. She already knows she gonna get fucked up, girl. But wait a minute. When they showed the proof that Eddie had unfollowed all them damn people, yo. <laughs> she talk about. I don't know who he followed, girl. But I don't care. Okay. <laughs> like I, I, I would have respected Wendy so much more if she would have just kept it a book. Yeah. I, I wasn't comfortable with my body, first of all, because I had a flat ass. You know, I used to call her smart water last season. I said she was <laughs> <laughs> like her body was, yeah, it needed to be whatever. But for a lot of other women, it would have helped to say, you know, yeah, it doesn't make me feel good that my husband likes this type of woman and I couldn't. I didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of women could have right. related to that instead of her getting on her friend talking about it was just for her. No, nigga, you, your nigga was over there following 300 booty bitches. Yep. <laughs> like, and it's her. <laughs> and you, it's obvious that there's some issues in that marriage. Now, I don't know if it was to the point that he was cheating on her, like people were saying, but it's obvious that he is attracted to other women and that is a big insecurity for her. And even mm-hmm. when Nikki t- said to her, you played yourself with showing how insecure you was about him saying that he found me attractive. Yeah. That episode, she was like, you did not, you did not say, I'm like, girl, calm down. It's a fucking right. game. But yeah. I think that she is very nervous of him leaving her or cheating leaving her. her. It's something yeah. not clean it's, all the way I, in the wall. I think Eddie is kind of like another, okay, you know how she was about her degrees? Like, it was, like, kind of something that made her. Like, such a big accomplishment that made her. How she kept bragging about her degrees. She, her marriage is kind of another, another brag. Yeah. Another brag, right. Another bragging, right. And I don't know, if, I don't know too much <laughs> about the, about Nigerians, but I don't know if that's something that they, you know, uh, 
you know, I, I don't know if that's like a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm thinking that it's probably like a really big accomplishment for her to one be accomplished and then to marry someone who is equally as accomplished. So, yeah. you know, so I don't know if that, if that's a factor in it, but I do think that her marriage is something else that she feels like she can brag when she has one up on other people. Yeah. And because he is very accomplished and he's an attorney and stuff like that. So I think that to her, this is something else that, you know, again, like I have one up on some, on, a, on people. Yeah, because remember so, she kept on saying they will never have a marriage like us. They will yes. never have a man like you. Girl, you ain't even got a marriage like you. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Girl, you better see if Giselle and Robin got room and they lesbian. Uh... <laughs> Wait a minute, but what else did Nikki say to her? Um, damn, it was something else that she said to Wendy. Oh, oh about her marriage. It was the booty oh. model thing, her body. It was something else she she got on Wendy for. I don't know. Damn, I had it in my head. You know I'm old. <laughs> so oh what's them thoughts gone? They Somebody gone. turned 40 one time and just swear they 77 I have years breast old. cancer. Breast cancer Oh my breast. God, here we go again. This is what she do every fucking day, y'all. She will throw that breast cancer. You don't even have it no more. That's the crazy part. Like, <sighs> Bitch, I do. Oh, no, God. Don't. God removed it. Oh, God. I don't remember, but yeah. Okay, so we went over everybody. I'm trying to yeah. think, damn, I wish I had like a clip or something like that. Could I had wrote notes I when can't. I thought we weren't doing it no more. I erased that shit because I got tired, girl. Because I, girl, I sit there and tried to watch that goddamn Porsche show. And all I can say is for the viewers that I am going to do reviews on Porsche's show. But child, that whole first episode was just filled with so many lies, child. Lies. <laughs> and, I'm like, this oh, is well, one we hang up. You gotta tell line. me about this. Girl, it, it was a mess from the first clip she started lying. The first clip is just lying, lying. It could nobody keep their story straight? One person <laughs> said this, she said that, he said this, he said <laughs> that. She's still jealous of the girl. She still. Let me just surmise that Portia, Portia being with that nigga Simon was to make Dennis ass jealous. Ooh. Because ain't no way in hell you engage to somebody else and you telling your ex fiance, your baby daddy, that he can't come to your event with a uh, with a, another bitch. What? This is the foolishness. <laughs> this is the fucking foolishness. This ghetto ratchet ass show. This is just some ghetto nasty ratchet Atlanta. Bullshit. Like, Portia's a hoe. Portia is a hoe. Portia is a hoe. I've been saying Portia was a hoe from her first season. Nobody wanted to fucking listen to me. I know I'm going to be a hoe. I used to be a hoe. I'm still a hoe. The hoe is coming in front of me. The hoe want to come back out. The cancer is stopping it. But she will be back I out. I love Portia. Portia is a dingy, dimwit whore. She is a she whore. Is. <laughs> And this but show didn't help her. Like, you went remember. from dating and being engaged. Girl, Dennis broke the shit down. He said, we broke up in July of 2020. December of 2020, she bought us matching pajamas for Christmas. Y'all saw the pictures. She's sitting all in between my legs. We was trying to work the shit out. We couldn't work the shit out because she got mad about some shit. Next thing I know, six months later, you engaged to somebody else. <laughs> make it make sense nigga like what the fuck is going on here? this bitch got a tattoo that they got together on this side of the deck now she was Simon she got a matching tattoo with this nigga on this side of the deck girl she is just a Ooh. whore she is a whore, a whore <laughs> the 90s. everything that she said about Kenya is really a reflection is, on herself she is a slut from the 90s you know me girl. and still say this I said that to some I posted my best friend today and said he looked like a drug dealer from the 90s girl, girl you know I love a 90s girl is a whore she, get a, she got on there talking about her and Simon started dating a month after they met 
her sister said they started dating a week or not. He they got engaged a week after they met. She said they uh, got engaged a month after they met. She said he slid <laughs> in her DMs. He said she slid in his DMs. But everybody <laughs> lying. Everybody lying in the shoot that's coming out in the confessions. Girl, that show was one big ass lie. They couldn't even get the storylines together. I'm like, nigga, y'all didn't practice this shit before you started. What the fuck is going on here? The fuck is some fucking ratchet ass shit. Simon is one of them egotistical fucking African men. You can't tell him shit, girl. Oh my God. And Dennis even asked the sister, is he for the money? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, uh, no, because she has her own money. He was like, it's something. He, he, he even like, what the fuck is going on? And then, mm -hmm. uh, the night of her birthday party, she talking about she ain't want Dennis to come to her birthday party with another bitch, but yet and still was riding in a bus that he rented for her to her birthday party. None of this shit makes sense. <sighs> That's fine watching that foolishness. I it, watch it's it. so ghetto. It's so ghetto and ratchet. It just the whole show just look and smell musty. Ugh. <laughs> anyway, we ain't even talking like about scrappy. that fuck shit. <laughs> yes, like Portia look like her booty stink to me now. Like, ugh. <laughs> ugh. but okay, anyway. anyway. Yeah, so that was uh our thoughts on the reunion. I feel like Nikki did I give her on a scale of one to ten. I give her a good six. Maybe she asked more yeah. questions that we didn't get to see, but I felt like she could have came harder. Um I agree. But overall, I would you the, want her to do it again next season? Only way I want her to do it next season is if Monique come back. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, I don't want her to do it next season for sure. But I mean I it's not that I had her, because I think she did an okay job like you. I, I give her like a six or a six and a half. Um, but I I want better questions. Uh, I want yeah. better questions. I, I And I'm sure she did go, she did, and maybe because she didn't want, they didn't want it to be repetitive. I'm like, you know, maybe Andy only gave her, because I'm, I'm sure she came with a, a hell of questions and they had to approve them. Yeah, or whatever. And they so, had a time I, frame because they started it like yeah. something at night and they had been going all day. Right. Because she only, because that's another thing. Andy had three episodes to really get, get questions out. She only had one. Yeah. So, yeah. if anything, I would want her particularly to come back. I would literally want like a funky Dineva, you know, to go. So I would love, yes. Yeah. I would, Not I would even just myself. Of course, I would love to do it. But outside of myself, I would do like literally a funky Dineva because he don't got no Same skin man. in the game with nobody. He don't give a fuck about yep. no of feelings. Yep. And he gonna ask the real question. And the only thing else that yep. I didn't like about Nikki was that uh, when shit got, when they got the organ, she was like, okay, next question. Like, no, sitting in yes. shit and dig in yep. like he was digging in the Ashley ass. Right, um, yeah. But overall, or what like do you a Tasha K or something like that? But yes, I agree. Yeah, I Tasha K messy Donnie. enough. She don't give a fuck neither. Yeah. Uh uh. Yeah. I would love for Funky Don Eva or her to do it if they. I don't think Andy gonna make a habit out of that though. I think that no. was just because it was Nicki Minaj. But they Minaj, do but just bring somebody else in. Period. They do Andy. just to switch it up because yeah. Andy can't. It's certain shit Andy can't do because one, he's white, and yeah, two, true. he'll look biased. So yeah, true. And he'd be nice looking biased him. anyway. It's obvious exactly. that he got his favorites. And that's that because he, he do be biased. Like, mm -hmm. Very much so. So overall, what did you give season six of Potomac? Uh, a, B, C, D. I give it a B plus A minus. That's fair. That's fair. I give the overall season... I'm with you. I it's, it's a between an A minus and a B plus. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. really the big thing was the Wendy thing this season. And then yeah. you know, the first episode when Karen ate Giselle ass up and we ain't had no problems right. after that. So you know what? I'm gonna say B plus. I'm gonna say B plus. I'm gonna say B plus. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait. It plus. wasn't it wasn't better than season. And also they didn't get a lot of as many episodes as they normally do because yeah. of the pandemic. So I know that they played a part in it, but I, I give it a B plus. Um, yeah, and then you had the Candace Mia situation that really infuriated me. Um, so yeah, I think that they they definitely came wasn't with better than five. 
No, nah, five was Liddy. Um, oh, gonna be epic. It's going to be hard for them to top five. Yeah, I can't wait to see what they're going to come with for next season. Uh, you're going to have to start back watching Real Housewives of Atlanta. You're going to have to. So I can bring <laughs> you in on certain episodes. We can talk about that because you know they didn't added new people and all of this shit now. Yeah, because so. I really want them to... If they got rid of the whole cast, I would watch it. I mean, they really do need to just start the fuck <laughs> over at this point. It's like, uh, they just they just keep Kenya. Yeah. And maybe Marlo, but I... Yeah. Candy can go. Candy didn't fulfill yeah, her. And I love here. Candy, but again... Yeah, love her, like, but... Love her dearly, but it's like, what, what else can you... <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. right now you at the point in your life where you are just kind of relaxing and you are and enjoying life. You done been through everything you needed to been through. You done overcame all of the obstacles you needed to overcome. You done had your kids. It's just it's time to move on. So yeah, I agree. All right, yeah. you guys. So that is our review. Oh of- wait, I got a question though. What? Do you? I got a question for you. Do you think that Monique will come back? I think the only way Monique would come back is if she got a public a public apology from Andy and the yeah, network. Bravo. Yeah. Yes. And they finally were able to say, you know what? We didn't acknowledge all the facts, you know, regarding that season. We did go harder on you than we did Candace. We now see that there is an issue with her. It wasn't just you. We didn't handle it correctly because Andy has made it clear on several occasions that he does want her back. And Mm -hmm. she's refused to come back. So I think that that public apology is needed because, I mean, it really honestly is needed because of the way that they treated her. And it was very unfairly because, yes, she was wrong for, you know, physically, you know, going there with her. But Candace was equally as wrong, equally as wrong. They both should have been reprimanded. Absolutely. And that's what I don't like that people try to I'm, I'm gonna stick with this situation i didn't like the fact that they tried the because of kit because of uh sorry candace's verbal abuse was just as bad as the physical abuse and in this case to me because you know normally physical abuse is worse than verbal but to me it was it was equal like you said one one didn't overcome the other and because candace has a history of being the antagonist and provoking people and being disrespectful, um, it 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 was warranted. Her ass whooping was warranted. So, um, but I did. I tweeted Andy like I'm like, like I'm somebody. He probably don't fucking shit. But <laughs> I tweeted Andy and Bravo, and it was just like you know I want Monique to come back, and y'all need to do the right thing and do whatever you need to do to fix the relationship. Yeah. So. But, I don't yeah. know though, girl. I don't know. We'll see. But we'll yeah. See. Thank you guys for watching this review. Let us know how you felt about the whole season overall. What do you grade it? What did you think of the fourth episode of the reunion? Let us know down in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. We love you guys and we will see you on the next video. Peace. See y'all. All right, I'm hanging up. Okay.